Hi, I'm Timothy John Agulto. I'm from the Philippines and I'm the executive director of Happy Noy. Happy Noy is a combination of two words, meaning happy and Pinoy. Pinoy is the slang for Filipino. So happy Filipinos. We basically work with micro-entrepreneurs, uh, starting with small stores or neighborhood stores. In the Philippines, we call them sari-sari stores. Sari-sari means variety stores. So I guess in, when you go to the rural towns, you will see those small stores in the houses uh, run by, by mothers. So we work with them because in the Philippines, there's around at least five, uh, one million of these stores. So there's a lot. And we would want to develop these stores as a channel where we can cascade goods and services to reach the base of the pyramid, to reach more people. So that is our dream. Happy Noy wants to develop this channel of stores so that we can reach more people and offer them, uh, offer them more goods and services. Besides goods, offer them education, offer them training, offer them insurance, offer them other financial services. Uh, and that's what we're developing right now. Interesting enough, when we started Happy Noise seven years ago, our concern was, why aren't the goods and services, why aren't goods or products reaching the far-off places? And when they reach those far-off places, why is it too expensive? So our initial challenge was how to make these products reach these far-off places. But over the years, we realized, as a lot of the retail market is already developing, this problem is being solved already. Meaning, big groceries, big uh, wholesale supermarkets are starting to pop out, even in rural towns. So this problem seems to be to be uh, this problem seems to be solved already. However, one problem that continues to persist is actually. Uh, a lot of Filipinos are unbanked, meaning they have no access to formal banking. They are not financially literate. It's so expensive to send money uh, because the Philippines is an archipelago with 7,000 plus islands. So people send money here and there. It's so expensive to, to send money. A lot of uh, Insurances and a lot of uh, government, for government insurances, health insurances are not reaching them. So these things are not reliant on the uh, logistics of actual products, but these services are still not reaching the the far off communities. So that's where we are still working at also. So maybe the the delivery of the of the concrete products is already being sl sold slowly. However, other services are not yet being sold. So that's why we're still working with this channel of small stores. This is our seventh year in, in Happy Noy. We work mostly with microfinance. Our main partner is actually CARD, Center for Agriculture and Rural Development. It's the biggest microfinance in the Philippines. They're at 2.3 million borrowers. So the challenge for microfinance is this. They've noticed that a lot, of their, a lot of their borrowers have very high repayment rates. They actually, the repayment rate is actually 99%, very high. However, they also noticed over a period of time, the businesses weren't growing. How, did they, how were they able to deduce that? Because the loans weren't growing. So the challenge is also not just to enable the s micro or borrowers to pay, but also to allow them to grow their stores, to grow their other businesses around the stores. That's where Happino is coming in. So we don't do microfinance. We actually work with them. We provide added services or other added products that can be offered by micro entrepreneurs to the base of the pyramid. Happy Noy, uh, just like what I shared with you a while ago, it's really going mobile. It's about mobile financial services. Our dream is to reach a lot of Filipinos and to, bring, to make them banked. A lot of Filipinos are unbanked. 
So our dream is to for Filipinos to have access to a lot of formal financial products. They have access to cheaper remittances. They have access to insurance for their social security. They have access to uh, they have access to um, education also. I really like working. Uh, I really like working as a social entrepreneur because I really get to put together two loves, the love for development but also the love for business. Uh, previous to this, I was in a school so it was very, very, it was very, very tight. But now, the environment allows me to be more entrepreneurial. And what I really like about this is I can, I can read something today, experiment it tomorrow, and see the results uh, within the next three days. So it's like uh, I'm, I'm having an actual learning laboratory where I can implement the things that I read about and see how, re how the actual effects uh, on the ground happen. So I think that's very exciting for an entrepreneur uh, because these things are not seen in books. Uh, you don't read them in books, you don't hear them in lectures. But the, the, the activity of experimentation, I think that's uh, one of the things that excites me in this work. Um, two things, no? the, the heart and the head. Learn very good business, sound business skills. Make sure your business is very, your business fundamentals is very good. I'd even suggest you work for a big corporation so that you learn as much on how to do good business. But also, as you do this, cultivate a personal relationship with the poor. Cultivate a personal relationship with the marginalized. Cultivate a personal relationship with the people that you seek to help in the future. So a uh, sound business foundation, a solid business foundation, but also a personal relationship with the poor.